I'm John Carter in Moscow. Now in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I'm John Carter in Petra. Reporting from India. In Colombia. I'm John Carter. Today on The Carter Report, John Carter talks about how to make America really great again. Welcome back today. Now, this is a pickup from the previous program. We're talking today about how to make America really great again. Uh, in the previous segment, I was talking about the great American work ethic, that we believe in working hard. We don't believe in socialism. I was telling the story how I left home when I was a boy, 16, went up into North Queensland, and I learned to work. I, I was not suffering People say, that was terrible. You know, didn't people come and help you? Well, no, they, in those days, it wasn't expected. You got what you earned, and I had to work hard. I had a heritage, though. When Australia was, um, what should I say, discovered by the Europeans um, about 230 years ago, the people who came out to Australia, those early Australians, most of them came out... <laughs> sort of third class. You went to prison or you were sent to the Antipodes as a terrible punishment if you stole a loaf of bread to look after your grandchildren. So those people got out there with nothing. They were dropped off in Sydney Cove. There was nothing there in the form of roads or building, nothing, just a wild continent. But people came out there with them who were... Anglican chaplains, and they were not what you'd call evangelical preachers, but they believed in prayer and they taught the convicts that they needed to pray. And the convicts started out with two things, praying to God and working hard. So, you know, I believe in the great Puritan work ethic through prayer and the early Australians were believers in God. Don't let any modern-day young person from Australia say, no, 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 we didn't. No, they all believed in God. I was brought up in a Bible-believing country. And through prayer and belief in God and hard work, Australia has become one of the, rest, uh, one of the, one of the richest and best nations in the world. So I believe in this working. I believe in working. I believe in hard work. I believe in honesty. A good day's work for a good day's pay. I don't believe uh, in keeping people down with awful wages. I think that's, that's awful. These are some pictures from my homeland. This is the Gold Coast. Some of the most beautiful cities, some of the most wonderful places. And then we come to the United States of America. And you go to places like New York City. And uh, after you've gone to New York City, you go out into the countryside and uh, you go to the Golden Gate and you see the beauty of America. This is a magnificent country and we should never complain if we have been born uh, in the United States of America. Am I saying too much? Am I being too patriotic? Make America great again by hard work, I tell you, and faith in God. Okay, here's another one of the great rules. Practice the golden rule. This is point number four. Aspects of this righteousness, the golden rule. What on earth are we talking about? Well, take your Bible, please, and come to Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. You know what the golden rule is? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Hear what I'm saying? That includes caring for the poor. That includes caring for the refugees. That includes caring for the sick. Hear what I'm saying? We need to care for the sick. And that means not saying hate speech. That means if you don't like it, then don't do it. 
Jesus said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. No more hate speech from the politicians in Washington, the press, and ordinary folks like you and me. No more hate speech. It's anti-Christian. You know, because Senator John McCain, a war hero and uh, an American patriot, a straight shooter, voted against a bill. Someone shouted at a political rally, he needs to die soon. What a shame. What a disgrace. What an un-American expression. I say to those people who claim to be Christians, try reading the Bible. Try finding out what Jesus said. Try reading Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7. Today in this great country, as in Australia and other countries, I say this to our lamentable shame. There is a great ignorance of the Bible. Hey, I'm a Christian. Well, what about Jesus and what he said? Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, where's that? Well, that's in the Bible. That's what Jesus said. If you want to make America great again, uh, then stop the hate speech. Treat others as we want to be treated and get back to the God of our fathers. Now, I was out walking on a hot day here in this part of the world in Thousand Oaks. I was up in the hills and I was charging up the hills. In fact, I was passing some bicycles. <laughs> they were going terribly slow. But, and I was perspiring. I was foolish. I had not brought a bottle of water with me. Here I am, going like crazy up these hills in the middle of summer. <sighs> Young man came over to me and he said, Sir, well now, he's got a few manners. He's got a few manners. Whatever happened to manners? Sir, he said, would you like a bottle of water? I said, can you spare it? He said, I got two. He said, it doesn't matter. I'm young and... Looks like you need it. And he gave me a bottle of water. As a little girl said, make all the bad people good and all the good people kind. What we need are for the religious people, the so-called good people, to become kind. You can make America great again by accepting this great truth. Here it is, repentance. Another part of this righteousness Aspects of righteousness, repentance, not a popular word. I want you to take your Bible, please, now, in the studio. 2 Chronicles 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 13 and 14. God says, got it? Turn to it. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain and command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Listen to me. There is no greatness without goodness and there is no goodness without repentance. That's what the Bible says. I was listening to a man not long ago who, who said on television, I never confess my sins. I don't confess my sins. He has a disease worse than leprosy because there is no heaven without repentance, no greatness without repentance. Repentance means turning from sin, from pride, arrogance, lying, cowardice, Racism, laziness, hate speech, the sins of the flesh, prostitution, pornography, fornication, and violence. There's plenty of room in America today to become great again by repenting of our sins. And our sins are standing like a great wall between us and God. No greatness without goodness, and no goodness without repentance. Repentance brings healing and restoration and forgiveness. You know why we're so divided? 
because there's no repentance on either side of the divide. Everybody is so self-righteous. Everybody is always right. And the other person is always wrong. Repentance brings healing and restoration and forgiveness in the family. Every family, we need to repent of our sins. Fathers need to repent of their sins to their children. Children need to repent of their sins to each other. And it brings healing in the nation. No true greatness without goodness and no goodness without repentance. We can't make America great again until America is good again. Now, America is facing a tremendous crisis. You look at the debt. Nobody talks about it anymore. For a while, everybody was talking about this tremendous deficit. What is it? Mm, Going up, 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 up. Nobody's talking about it anymore. It's a cancer, but there's a greater cancer. It is the moral sickness. Therefore, we need repentance. Point number six. Point number six. This aspect of this righteousness or this goodness that makes a nation great. Obedience to God's law. Now, I want you to come to the words of the great Moses, Deuteronomy 6, 17 to 25. Notice it in the Bible. Deuteronomy, the fifth book of Moses, chapter 6, 17 to 25. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you, and that you may go in and possess the good land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to cast out all your enemies from before you as the Lord has spoken. When your son asks you in time to come, saying, what is the meaning of the testimonies, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord our God has commanded you? Then you shall say to your son, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and the Lord showed signs and wonders before our eyes, great and severe against Egypt, Pharaoh and all his household. Then he brought us out from there that he might turn us in to give us the land of which he swore to our fathers and the Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is today. Then it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to observe all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. We are not saved by our obedience, but we are not saved without it. We are saved by the grace of God. We are saved by the mercy of Christ, but we are not saved to break the law of God. We are saved to keep the law of God. You can make America great again by keeping the commandments. Come over here to Isaiah 48, the book of Isaiah 48 and uh, verse 18, Isaiah 48, 18. There it says, oh, that you had heeded my commandments. Then your peace would have been uh, like a river and your righteousness, your righteousness, like the waves of the sea. Let me tell you something else while we're on this subject. Okay, okay. We can't make our own laws. The Supreme Court can't change the law of God. The Supreme Court can't say, oh, marriage is so-and-so, no. That's not their authority. The word of God tells me what is right and what is wrong. And we will follow the laws of God and the laws of man when they're in harmony with the laws of God. I still believe in the Ten Commandments. The first four define our relationships to the Creator. The last six, our relationships to each other. All civilized nations have been based on the Ten Commandments. Every one of them. All the great countries. The commandments of God are God's great antidote to crime. Sexually transmitted diseases. Divorce, child abuse, drug abuse, poverty, racism, dishonesty, and all those negative factors 
that have been destroying America. You can't make America great again until you make America good again, and you get good again when you obey the commandments of God through faith in Christ. The mighty Roman Empire was destroyed because she made war on God's commandments and uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who do we think we are? Think we're better? Nothing can happen to us. If we walk in the footsteps of the Roman Empire, we will go down as the Roman Empire did. But it's not too late to turn to God and to repent. People in Washington have got tremendous problems. They don't know what to do. Well, try making America good again by being good again. Righteousness exalts the nation. When it says righteousness, it means uh, the goodness of God permeating society. Why has America been a beacon to the world? Because America was based on Judeo-Christian values. That's the reason. Number seven is the seventh point in this righteousness. It's going to take courage. Defend your given right of freedom of speech and religion. The greatness of America, freedom of speech and freedom of religion. The First Amendment says, look at it, First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. The state ought to stay out of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Don't tell me how to worship God or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. It is right for the American people peaceably or peacefully to march and to demonstrate. You say, no, no, you can't. Yes, you can. You're not living in Russia or China. This is America, you see. The First Amendment says freedom of speech and freedom of religion. I want you to notice the Jefferson letter of 1802, the Jefferson letter. You can read it. He said, I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people which declared that their legislature should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. Now today I'm hearing a lot of talk about saying that we should get rid of this wall that separates church and state, and we should declare that we are a Christian nation. That would take us back to persecution and the dark ages. We believe, I believe with Jefferson, in spite of what some are saying today, I believe with Jefferson, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. And you know why ministers get tied up in politics? It's because they're failing to preach the gospel of Christ. Their churches are empty, they're dying, and therefore they want political power. I say to the ministry, do your duty, preach the word of God, and stop playing politics. When I was a boy studying at Avondale College, I was taught these words by one of my old professors, Pastor Heffron. Now, I may have got it a little wrong because it's gone back a year or two. He said, I may disagree with everything you say, but I will defend to my last breath. You're right to say it. Of course, the politically correct people don't believe that. They believe you can only say something that doesn't offend them. 
and we're breeding a race of namby pambies. Oh, I've been offended. Hey, grow up, get out in the real world, would you? You're going to get offended in the real world. If you come to work for me, you'll get offended straight away. <laughs> oh, I can't do this. No, I'll be offended. we got to have places in Berkeley where nobody can ever be offended. So nobody... What a lot of junk, you know. I may disagree with everything you say, but I will defend to my last breath. You're right to say it. This means this. The Roman Catholic Church, the Mormons, the Protestants, the Muslims, the Jews, the Hindus, the atheists, the Adventists, have the right to freely express their ideas and their beliefs. People have the right to be wrong. Oh, people have said to me, no, no, you got it right. You've only got the right to be right. What are you going to do, set up the Inquisition again? That's what they believed. You got the right to be right. Every person has got the right to be wrong because your wrong may be my right and my right may be your wrong. You see? Freedom of expression. This right is recognised in America, Australia, Great Britain and other free countries. Many American universities restrict freedom of speech. Berkeley, in California, they have the rule of political correctness, which makes cowards of all men. That's what they happen in, that's what they did in Russia and China. Only allowed to say the party line. If you don't say the party line, well, you're going to go to Siberia. Political correctness is un-American. Therefore, if you want to make America great again, you've got to make America good again. How? There's a need to return to the Bible. The Declaration of Independence, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. with faith in God and love for each other, America will be truly good and great again. Now let me read you something because this sort of sums up America to me. This was Winston Churchill's favourite hymn. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is tramping out the vintage where grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. I've seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They've builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never sound retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. O be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. This, this, this is the great song that that great man heard after he heard it for the first time. Abraham Lincoln, 
heard it for the first time, and eyes have seen the glory. And uh, he just wept as he heard it. All this stuff that says we're no different to these other countries, it's not the truth. America, handful of others, just a tiny number that came out of the Reformation. Those great countries have been based upon the Bible and faith in the Creator that says that every person is distinct and glorious. Amen. And if we would make this beloved country that already is great, if we would make America greater and better and fairer, then we must make her good and have this righteousness. Therefore I say, may God bless the United States of America. Amen. The word began in a village. Churches and schools sprang up and multiplied, reaching into the city. Great truths revealed to the people of Papua New Guinea, changing thousands of lives. Our eyes are going to be opened to the discovery of amazing truths. The greatest truth in the Bible, it is the truth that God loves you. It has completely changed my life and I'm going to be baptized this Sabbath. Pastor Kata has put something in my heart that I will never forget. Thank you, Pastor Kata, for your program. It has changed my life completely. John Carter's Great Truths Revealed was recorded live from Papua New Guinea. Experience the miracles in this 21 DVD series for a gift of $150 US or $210 Australian. To order, visit our website or call. This is my 43rd visit to preach the everlasting gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they had smoke bombs and they had fire bombs and the Russian army had to take me to the meetings. I come here, my friend, because of the need. These were days of grace and glory and mighty power. For a donation of $100 or more, a signed copy of the John Carter biography can be yours by writing to us at the address on the screen or visit our website. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.